cover land administration will cover one land administration planning and management and two urban planning usage and building bylaws these will be incentivized for completion within the next three years through appropriate fiscal support rural land related actions rural land related actions will include one assignment of unique land parcel identification number ul pin or bu aadhar for all lands two digitization of cadastral maps three survey of subdivisions survey of map sub subdivisions as per current ownership four establishment of land registry and five linking to the farmers registry these actions will also facilitate credit flow and other agricultural services urban land related actions land records in urban areas will be digitized with gis mapping an it based system for property record administration updating and tax administration will be established these will also facilitate improving the financial position of urban local bodies labor related reforms service to labor our government will facilitate the provision of a wide array of services to labor including those for employment and skilling a comprehensive integration of e shram portal with other portals will facilitate such one stop solution open architecture databases for the rapidly changing labor market skill requirements and available job roles and a mechanism to connect job aspirants with potential employers and skill providers will be covered in these services shram suvidha and samadhan portal shram suvidha and samadhan portal will be revamped to enhance ease of compliance for industry and trade capital and entrepreneurship related reforms financial sector vision and strategy for meeting financing financing needs of the economy our government will bring out a financial sector vision and strategy document to prepare the sector in terms of size capacity and skills this will set the agenda for the next 5 years and guide the work of the government regulators financial institutions and market participants taxonomy for climate finance we will develop taxonomy for climate finance for enhancing the availability of capital for climate adaptation and mitigation this will support achievement of the country's climate commitments and green transition variable variable capital company structure we will seek the required legislative approval for providing an efficient and flexible mode for financing leasing of aircrafts and ships and pooled funds of private equity through a variable company structure foreign direct investments and overseas investment the rules and regulations for foreign direct investment and overseas investments will be simplified to one facilitate foreign direct investments two nudge prioritization and three promote opportunities for using indian rupee as a currency for overseas investment nps vatsalya nps vatsalya a plan for contribution by parents and guardians for minors will be started on attaining the age of majority a uh, plan can be converted seamlessly into a normal nps account use of technology we have successfully used technology for improving productivity and bridging inequality in our economy during the past 10 years public investment in digital infrastructure and innovations by the private sector have helped in improving access of all citizens particularly the common people to market resources education health and services we will step up adoption of technology 
towards digital, digitalization of the economy, ease of doing business. For enhancing ease of doing business, we are already working on the Jan Vishwas Bill 2.0. Further, states will be incentivized for implementation of the business reforms, action plans, and digitize, digitalization. Data and statistics for improving data governance, collection, processing and management of data and statistics, different sectoral databases, including those established under the Digital India mission, will be utilized with active use of technology tools. New pension scheme. The committee to review the NPS has made considerable progress in its work. I am happy to I am happy I am happy that the staff side of the National Council of the Joint Consultative Missionary for Central Government Employees has taken a constructive approach. A solution will be evolved which addresses the relevant issues while maintaining fiscal prudence to protect the common citizens. Budget estimates for 24-25. For the year 24-25, total receipts other than borrowings and the total expenditure are estimated at 32.07 lakh crore rupees and 48.21 lakh crore rupees respectively. The net tax receipts are estimated at 25.83 lakh crore rupees. The fiscal deficit is estimated at 4.9% of the GDP. The gross and the net market borrowings through dated securities during 24-25 are estimated at 14.01 lakh crore rupees and 11.63 lakh crore rupees respectively. Both will be less than that in 23-24. The fiscal consolidation path announced by me in 2021 has served our economy very well, and we aim to reach the deficit below 4.5% next year. The government is committed to staying the course. From 2026-27 onwards, our endeavor will be to keep the fiscal deficit each year such that the central government's debt will be on a declining path as percentage of GDP. I will now move to part B. Indirect taxes. Sir, I start with GST. It has decreased tax incidence on the common man, reduced compliance burden and logistics cost for trade and industry and enhanced revenues of the central and the state governments. It is a success of vast proportions. To multiply the benefits of GST, we will strive to further simplify and rationalize the tax structure and endeavor to expand it to the remaining sectors. My proposals for custom duties, my proposals for customs duties intend to support domestic manufacturing, deepen local value addition, promote export competitiveness, and simplify taxation while keeping the interest of the general public and consumers surmount. In Budget 22-23, we reduced the number of customs duty rates. I propose to undertake a comprehensive review of the rate structure over the next six months to rationalize and simplify it for ease of trade removal of duty inversion and reduction of disputes. I shall now take up sector-specific customs duty proposals. Medicine and medical equipments. To provide relief to cancer patients, I propose to fully exempt three more medicines from customs duties. I also propose changes in the BCD on X-ray tubes and flat panel detectors
for use in medical X-ray machines under the phased manufacturing program so as to synchronize them with the domestic capacity addition. Mobile phone and related parts. With a three-fold increase in domestic production and almost a hundred-fold jump in exports of mobile phones over the last six years, the Indian mobile industry has matured. In the interest of consumers, I now propose to reduce the BCD on mobile phone, mobile PCBA, and mobile charger to 15%. Critical minerals, minerals such as lithium, copper, cobalt, and rare earth elements are critical for sectors like nuclear energy, renewable energy, space, defense, telecommunications, and high-tech electronics. I propose to fully exempt customs duties on 25 critical minerals and reduce BCD on two of them. This will provide a major fillip to the processing and refining of such minerals and help secure their availability for these strategic and important sectors. Solar energy. Energy transition is critical in the fight against climate change. To support energy transition, I propose to expand the list of exempted capital goods for use in the manufacture of solar cells and panels in the country. Further, in view of sufficient domestic manufacturing capacity of solar gas, glass, and tinned copper interconnect, I propose not to extend the exemption of custom duties provided to them. Marine products. India's seafood exports in the last financial year touched an all-time high of more than 60,000 crores of rupees. Frozen shrimp accounted for about two-thirds of these exports. To enhance their comp competitiveness, I propose to reduce BCD on certain broodstock, polycaate worms, shrimp, and fish feed to 5%. I also propose to exempt customs duty on various inputs for manufacture of shrimp and fish feed. Leather and textile. Similarly, to enhance the competitiveness of exports in the leather and textile sectors, I propose to reduce BCD on real down-filling material from duck or goose. I am also making additions to the list of exempted goods for manufacture of leather and textile garments, footwear, and other leather articles for export. To rectify inversion in duty, I propose to reduce BCD subject to conditions on methylene diphenyl diisocyanate, MDI, for manufacture of spandex yarn from 7.5 to 5%. Furthermore, the export duty structure on raw hides, skin, and leather is proposed to be simplified and rationalized. Precious metals. To enhance domestic value addition in gold and precious metal jewelry in the country, I propose to reduce customs duties on gold and silver to 6% and that of platinum to 6.4%. Other metals, steel and copper, are important raw materials. To reduce the cost of production, I propose to remove the BCD on ferro-nickel and blister copper. I am also continuing with nil BCD on ferrous scrap and nickel cathode and concessional BCD of 2.5% on copper scrap. Electronics. To increase value addition in the domestic electronics industry, I propose to remove the BCD subject to conditions on oxygen-free copper for manufacture of resistors. I also propose to exempt certain parts for manufacture of connectors. Chemicals and petrochemicals. To support existing and new capacities in the pipeline, I propose to increase the BCD on ammonium nitrate from 7.5% to 
plastics, PVC flex banners are bio, non-biodegradable and hazardous for environment and health. To curb their imports, I propose to raise the BCD on them from 10 to 25 percent. Telecommunication equipment. To incentivize domestic manufacturing, I propose to increase the BCD from 10 to 15 percent on PCBA of specific, specified telecom equipment. Trade facilitation. To promote domestic aviation and boat and ship MRO, I propose to extend the period of ex period for export of goods imported for repairs from six months to one year. I'll read that again. To promote domestic aviation and boat and ship maintenance, repair and operations, I propose to extend the period for export of goods imported for repairs from six months to one year. In the same vein, I propose to extend the time limit for re-import of goods for repairs under warranty from three to five years. I now move to direct taxes. We will continue our efforts to simplify taxes, taxes improve taxpayer services, provide tax certainty, and reduce litigation while enhancing revenues for funding the development and welfare schemes of the government. It, is, it has been our endeavor to simplify taxation. We have taken a number of measures in the last few years, including introduction of simplified tax regimes without exemptions and deductions for corporate tax and for personal income tax. This has been appreciated by taxpayers. 58% of corporate tax came from the simplified tax regime in the financial year 22-23. Similarly, as per data available till now, for the last fiscal, more than two-thirds have availed the new personal income tax regime. Comprehensive review of the Income Tax Act. I am now announcing a comprehensive review of the Income Tax Act 1961. The purpose is to make the Act concise, lucid, easy to read, and understand. This will reduce disputes and litigation, thereby providing tax certainty to the taxpayers. I will also bring down the demand embroiled in litigation. It is proposed to be completed in six months. A beginning is being made in the Finance Bill by simplifying the tax regime for charities, tedious rate structures, provisions of reassessment and search provisions, and capital gains taxation. Simplification for charities and tedious. Two tax exemption regimes. The two tax exemption regimes for charities are proposed to be merged into one. The 5% TDS rate on many payments is being merged into the 2% TDS rate and the 20% TDS rate on repurchase of units by mutual funds or UTI is being withdrawn. TDS rate on e-commerce operators is proposed to be reduced from 1 to 0.1%. Moreover, credit of TCS is proposed to be given in the TDS to be deducted on salary. Further, I propose to decriminalize pay for payment of TDS up to the due date of filing statement for the same. I also plan to provide a standard operating procedure for TDS defaults and simplify and rationalize the compounding guidelines for such defaults. Simplification of reassessment. I propose to thoroughly simplify the provisions for reopening and reassessment. An assessment here and after can be reopened beyond three years from the end of the assessment year only if the escaped income is 50 lakh rupees or more up to a maximum period of five years from the end of the assessment year. 
even in search cases, a time limit of six years before the year of the search as against the existing time limit of 10 years is being proposed. This will reduce tax uncertainty and disputes. Simplification and rationalization of capital gains. Capital gains taxation is also proposed to be hugely simplified. Short-term gains on certain financial assets shall henceforth attract a tax rate of 20%, while that on all other financial assets and all non-financial assets shall continue to attract the applicable tax rate. Long-term gains on all financial and non-financial assets, on the other hand, will attract a tax rate of 12.5%. For the benefit of the lower and the middle income classes, I propose, the, I propose to increase the limit of exemption of capital gains on certain financial assets to 1.25 lakh rupees per year. Listed financial assets held for more than a year will be classified as long-term, while unlisted financial assets and all non-financial assets will have to be held for at least two years to be classified as long-term. Unlisted bonds and debentures, debt mutual funds, and market-linked debentures, irrespective of holding period, however, will attract tax on capital gains at applicable rates. Taxpayer services. All the major taxpayer services under GST and most services under customs and income tax have been digitalized. All remaining services of customs and income tax, including rectification and order giving effect to appellate orders, shall be digitalized and made paperless over the next two years. Litigation and appeals. While our concerted efforts to reduce pendency of appeals at various appellate fora are beginning to show good results, it will continue to engage our highest attention. To dispose of the backlog of first appeals, I plan to deploy more officers to hear and decide such appeals, especially those with large tax effect. For resolution of certain income tax disputes pending an appeal, I am also proposing Vivadse Vishwa Scheme 2024. Further, I propose to increase monetary limits for filing appeals related to direct taxes, excise, and service tax in the tax tribunals, high courts, and Supreme Court to 60 lakh rupees, 2 crore rupees, and 5 crore respectively, with a view to reduce litigation and provide certainty in international taxation, we will expand the scope of safe harbor ru rules and make them more attractive. We will also streamline the transfer pricing assessment procedure. Employment and investment. I have a few proposals to promote investment and foster employment. First of all, to bolster the Indian startup ecosystem, boost the entrepreneurial spirit, and to support innovation. I propose to abolish the so-called angel tax for all classes of investors. Second, there is tremendous potential for cruise tourism in India to give a fillip to this employment-generating industry. I am proposing a simpler tax regime for foreign shipping companies operating domestic cruises in the country. Third, India is a world leader in the diamond cutting and polishing industry, which employs a large number of skilled workers. To further promote the development of this sector, we would provide for safe harbor rates for foreign mining companies selling raw diamonds in the country. Fourth, to attract foreign capital for our development needs, 
I propose to reduce the corporate tax rate on foreign companies from 40 to 35 percent. Deepening the tax base. I have a couple of proposals for deepening the tax base. First, security transaction tax on futures and options of securities is proposed to be increased to 0.02 percent and 0.1 percent respectively. Second, for reasons of equity, I propose to tax income received on buyback of shares in the hands of recipients. Other proposals. To improve social security benefits, deduction of expenditure by employers towards NPS is proposed to be increased from 10 to 14 percent of the employee's salary. Similarly, deduction of this expenditure up to 14 percent of salary from the income of employees in private sector, public sector banks and undertakings opting for the new tax regime is proposed to be provided. Indian professionals working in multinationals get ESOPs and invest in social security schemes and other movable assets abroad. Non-reporting of such small foreign assets has penal consequences under the Black Money Act. Such non-reporting of movable assets up to 20 lakh rupees is proposed to be depenalized. Other major proposals in the finance bill relate to withdrawal of equalization levy of 2 percent, expansion of tax benefits to certain funds and entities in IFSCs, and immunity from penalty and prosecution to Benamidar on full and true disclosure so as to improve conviction under the Benami Transaction Prohibition Act 1988. Personal income tax. Coming to personal income tax rates, I have two announcements to make for those opting for the new tax regime. First, the standard deduction for salaried employees is proposed to be increased from 50,000 to 75,000 rupees. Similarly, deduction on family pension for pensioners is proposed to be enhanced from 15,000 to 25,000 rupees. This will provide relief to about 4 crore salaried individuals and pensioners. Second, in the new tax regime, the tax rate structure is proposed to be revised as follows. 0 to 3 lakh rupees, nil. 3 to 7 lakh rupees, 5%. 7 to 10 lakh rupees, 10%. 10 to 12 lakh rupees, 15%. 12 to 15 lakh rupees, 20 percent, and above 15 lakh rupees, 30 percent. As a result of these changes, a salaried employee in the new tax regime stands to save up to 17,500 rupees in income tax. Apart from these, I am also making some ch other changes as given in the annexure. As a result of these proposals, review of about 30, revenue of about 37,000 crore, that is 29,000 crore in direct taxes and 8,000 crore in indirect taxes will be foregone, while revenue of about 30,000 crore rupees will be additionally mobilized. Thus, the total revenue foregone is about 7,000 crores annually. Mr. Speaker, sir, with this, I commend the budget to this August House. Jai Hind. Item number two. Item number two.
Sir, with your permission, I rise to lay on the table the following statements under Section 3 of the Fiscal Responsibility and Budget Management, FRBM Act 2003, Medium-Term Fiscal Policy come Fiscal Policy Strategy Statement and Macroeconomic Framework Statement. Item number 3. Sir, with your permission, I rise to move for leave to introduce the Finance Number 2 Bill 2024. प्रश्न है कि विधेयक को पूरा स्थापित करने की अनुमति प्रदान की जाए जो सदस्य इसके पक्ष में हाँ के जो सदस्य विरोध में ना के मेरे विचार में निर्णय हाँ वालों के पक्ष व हाँ वालों के पक्ष व अनुमति प्रदान की जाती है माननीय मंत्री जी अब विधेयक पूरा स्थापित करें सर आई इंट्रोड्यूस द बिल आइटम नंबर फोर the Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir Budget. Sir, I rise to present a statement, Hindi and English versions, of the estimated receipts and expenditure of the Union Territory of Jammu Kashmir for the year 24-25. Sabha ki karwai kal budhwar dinak 24 July 2024 ko praapt 11 bajet tak ke liye istigit ki jati hai.